Um, uh, Hitchcock Truffaut, this film is going to be opening at uh, Film Forum uh, next month. Uh, and the, the, the team at Film Forum, the team at uh, Co Media Group were gracious enough to allow us to, uh, to have this little sneak preview screening as part of our festival. I first saw this film at the Cannes Film Festival uh, in May. Uh, of course, the, 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 the subject matter of the book, Hitchcock Truffaut, is one that resonates with any cinephile. It is the uh, kind of Bible of, uh, of, of the last couple generations for uh, film lovers. And the director, Kent Jones, has uh, done something uh, terrific in this film. He's not only uh, documenting the history of that book and, uh, and extracting from that book so many of the uh, moments that make it special, but uh, he's doing something else. He's expanding that dialogue that took place 50 years ago between Alfred Hitchcock and Francois Truffaut and uh, expanding it to include uh, uh, filmic, contemporary filmmakers uh, like Richard Linklater, uh, uh, David Fincher, and, uh, and so many others um, who provide really eloquent uh, interviews in this film. Um, we're going to do uh, something uh, unique uh, for this screen. We're gonna, uh, for the screen, we're going to have a little conversation uh, between two special guests. Uh, and then after the screening, uh, Director Kent Jones will come back for a, a short uh, Q&A where you can get to work in some of your own questions. Uh, right now, it is uh, my real pleasure to uh, bring to the stage the director of this film and one of the great directors who appears in this film. Please welcome Kent Jones and Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Um, in the movie, there's a, a moment when Marty's talking about um, actually being able to see all the great work that Hitchcock did during the 50s on its first run, um, and what a special experience that was for you. Well, yes, I mean, um, I happened to, I was born in 42, so uh, by 46, 47, I think it was the first time I can remember seeing of uh, Hitchcock, although I was far too young to, to pick up on it completely, was the Paradigm case. In case my mother took her to see it, and uh, I remember clearly certain very specific uh, uh, characters, uh, the Charles Lawton character, um, um, well, the, the tone and the mood of the picture always stayed with me, and it, it, it was very impressive in terms of the lighting and uh, the nature of um, uh, the conflict in it. Uh, but it was way beyond, uh, way over me. I didn't quite get it. The next one I remember seeing by, by title was in a crowd, there were all these extraordinary things with these Hitchcock pictures, because it was like a franchise, one came out every year. Yeah. You went to see the Hitchcock film, like you go to see now, I guess, uh, what do you, uh, superhero yeah. thing, right? Yeah. 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 So you would go, yeah. yeah. so you would go, it's a Hitchcock film, and it's gonna be scary, or it's gonna be funny, or something. And um, Strangers on a Train right. was with a crowded theater. I'm telling you, that yeah. it was an extraordinary, especially the merry-go-round sequence, or, anything with uh, the scenes between Robert Walker and uh, um, Polly Granger, yeah. you know, was extraordinary, Bruno, all of that. Uh, the next, I remember my father taking me to see a, a Rear Window, yeah. with, again, on a Sunday afternoon with, with a packed theater of a thousand people reacting to this thing, um, was extraordinary. And I literally, I saw every one of them, actually. Um, the one I had trouble with was Trouble with Harry. I yeah, didn't get it. Which is a very odd. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get it. Beautiful looking, though, <laughs> yeah. by the way. Beautiful looking, but... No, the tone of that movie. I didn't get very, it. Very, very odd. Um, <laughs> I, I just didn't. And then uh, there was... Um, uh, what was the name? The, the, um, the big ones. The uh, North by Northwest yeah. at the Radio City Music Hall in Vista Vision. Yeah. You know, it was the kind of thing you just kept going back and to. Vertigo was in Vista Vision. Yeah. Vertigo in Vista Vision, yeah. uh, which uh, we, we went to. It was the Capitol Theater here in New York projected in this division, uh, that was a film that, um, well, that uh, was regarded as a, a disappointment. Right. And so myself and my friends went to see it. We liked it, didn't quite, you know, understand completely everything that was going on with it, but it stayed with us. And then, of course, the, uh, the, um, the big um, uh, roller coaster, which was the uh, Psycho, yeah. seeing that on Broadway at midnight. The pack theater. <laughs> you can't imagine. I guess, the only, I guess the only thing would be like everybody seeing Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something for the first time, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This had a little more depth. A little more art. Yeah, a little yeah. more. Yeah. 
<laughs> ever so I guess slightly. I, did, I didn't see yeah. Texas Chainsaw. I only saw on television. So, but um, the uh, psycho that night it was extraordinary because people were waiting online to go in, and that wasn't the case. You just walked in those days. You walked in the middle. That's what you did. Whether it was Hitchcock, doesn't matter. You know, you know who the murderer was. You know how it's going to turn. Doesn't watch the beginning again. That's all. And so um, we all had to wait, and people came out screaming, and people were saying, what happens? And we're not telling you, we're not telling you. <laughs> the, 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 the audience reaction was, uh, was remarkable at the Mayfair Theater, I remember now. Um, but uh, I was very, we were very lucky to, to uh, have this uh, almost taken for granted, really, this, these extraordinary yeah. films. And then I think the next was The Birds, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, which, is what, which is what uh, keeps in post-production on The Birds when they have the yes. conversation. Yeah. 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 And I guess, you know, uh, I was 42, and so I'm just 20, 21 years old, the birds, I guess. But the thing about it was, um, by that point, the word got back that Hitchcock was taken um, as an artist. Right. Uh, from yeah. France and from England and from other places coming around. And American cinema was being reevaluated by um, uh, these, uh, these uh, critics and writers and, uh, in France and in England. Um, and then and, the book really cemented it. And the right? book did that, yes. Yeah. The book was the first, it's 50 years ago? Yeah. Well, yep, sorry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we got through somehow. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, um, it's interesting because uh, when you're young, I mean, you know, I remember showing Hitchcock films to my own kids when they were young, not psycho, but you know, I mean, when they were, when they were very young and they just uh, were absolutely thrilled from, yeah. you know, from the very beginning, and they wanted to watch them again and again. You know. Well, the thing is, that I think they're timeless. I think, uh, like I do with my, my kid now and my friends, yeah. um, whether it was, oh, I, you know, North by Northwest or Leading, the one that really affected them was Shadow of a Doubt, yeah. interestingly enough. Yeah. The, the 12 or 13 year old girls, and they were very uh, disturbed <laughs> by that one. Yeah. <laughs> because Michael, I had never seen it on a big screen when I was growing up, it was on television. Michael Charlie. You know, yeah. yeah, Uncle Charlie and all that. It was really disturbing. Uh, but um, uh, Rear Window and all the uh, the classic ones, uh, Man Who Knew Too Much yeah. was the other that uh, in the, the remake. theater. Uh, yeah. The remake, yeah, yeah, yeah. the remake. Um, and so um, uh, I find that uh, the Hitchcock ones were the pictures that not only do they um, accept them as modern, yeah. as immediate and accessible, but they the repeated viewings. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. camera moves quiet. Yeah. They like the quiet, mm -hmm. which is interesting for for today's. Um, uh, younger people to, to realize that, you know, in a film you could have quiet. <laughs> I haven't done that that often, but... <laughs> More than others. Yeah, yeah, well, let's say. Um, we were just talking here just, just a minute ago about actors or cattle, which is the famous oh, Hitchcock You know, statement. yeah, and everybody uh, came back, he said actors or cattle, that's terrible. Oh yeah. my God, he's a, But when you hear him say it in this thing, yeah. this is the beauty of this picture, he has the tapes. When you hear him say it, you can tell, here's, I guess, this is this French critic, right, yeah. coming in and uh, uh, interviewing him seriously about all his work. Yeah. Um, and um, there might be a little bit of a, an edge to it, you know, and then, yeah, well, you know, I had this problem with Montgomery Clift, he wasn't going to ruin my design. Yeah. And I understand the way he says my design, I yeah. get it. My geography. I, my geography, yeah. I totally get it because of a certain kind of actor. And, he would go, and you'd have to confront him if you want to keep that design or that geography of the uh, of um, um, uh, the scene itself, yeah. especially conceived in the editing, a certain way, and you just have to stand there and fight it. Yeah. That's all. It's a different kind of acting style than he was used to, I would think. But in the case of uh, actors and cattle, the way he says it is kind of a uh, I don't know, kind of a little I think bra it's a, bragging I think in a way. It's like oh, they're just cattle. It doesn't matter. Come on. But it's a Gary Grant and Reburman and cattle. I mean. <laughs> No, but it's a smoke screen, right? Because I mean, it's the same for the same reasons that he always used to say, "Oh yes, I draw everything in advance. I'm bored on the set." I mean, bullshit. How could you just you doesn't not be bored. Yeah, you can there's read, no way you can. You can't yeah. be bored on the set. If you are, you're not making the film. Yeah. Well, but also he's just he was engaged with those actors. I mean, just, yes, you know, he had to be. No yeah, way. just the direction of the kissing scene in Notorious. Yeah. Or yeah. even in North by like Northwest, which was a lot of fun, and the, and the train, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but. Um, um, no, I think it's fascinating to, to what you were able to do with the picture because of uh, the tapes and the uh, also the uh, uh, the younger people commenting on all all yeah. of the uh, the younger directors. The younger directors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, well, I guess the younger the, the younger than me. Please. <laughs> all those kids. 
Yeah. David yes. Fincher. You know, ah, Fifty yes, years yes. ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the um the the but, but the acting is actually a subject that that is part of the movie, as you'll see. But it's something that that. Uh, you address, which is that Hitchcock saw with Montgomery Cliff, there was a shift in the center of gravity in, in, in movies, and it was, you know, the actor became. You know, That's true. The um, um, in terms the of the Cliff and Brando and Dean, yeah. everything shifted with the acting styles. Yeah. And, um, and with directors like Kazan. And, well, Kazan, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that that was uh, sort of a um, particularly from um, uh, Panic in the Streets and On the Waterfront. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, everything shifted that way, and uh, the, the, I guess he, he would really be the greatest director of actors yeah. in the 20th century in terms of Kazan. Yeah. And so that had to that post-war America, five years later, it just changed. Yeah. It just changed, and suddenly it became internal and yeah. uh, sense memory, uh, which I understand the, the sort of what they call the method or something, and, yeah. and then it goes back to. Um, Stanislavski, I understand, and then I was told recently that Stanislavski had studied the spiritual exercises of the Jesuits. Oh. You're kidding. No. Is that true? I didn't know yeah. that. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> How about that? Being immediately, feeling that you're there at the moment of, let's say, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the parables of Jesus speaking, and uh, you know, so you have to, uh, I know a lot of people who were not able to complete that, that uh, uh, spiritual exercises, the, the process. They just weren't able to get through it. Yeah. Uh, but it is has to do with sense memory and imagining yourself there at the moment, at the crucifixion, or at the, uh, in that case. So um, he took it from, apparently took it from there. Wow. Stanislavski, that's what I was told recently. That's amazing. Yeah. And, then never knew that. and the, yeah, the spiritual exercises are, it's quite, quite something to, yeah. uh, uh, to attempt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, Faced with that, yeah. I, I, you know, this is very specific with Hitchcock. It's very specific. It, it, but what I love watching, uh, I just like watching his pictures over and over again, even without the sound. I like watching yeah. um, because of the precision of the frame and the, something that Rick Linklater brings up in the movie. You can turn yeah. the sound yeah, off. Yeah, turn the sound off, and uh, it's just about what's in the, the, the size of the frame and um, the size of the actors in the frame, the, the figures of the bodies, how they move. Uh, you know, the, even the rhythm. Let's say Cary Grant coming up the stairs with the, uh, the glass of, of the glass of milk. It's how he moves. Yes. You know, and yeah, well, right. he's going to come up the stairs, and very often I find that um, I'm shooting something, and um, I said, well, he's just going to go from she or he is going to go from here to there, and I said, what's wrong with it? Oh, they're too fast. Yeah. Then we got to slow it down. Then there are versions, you know, version A, version B, version C. What, which one? has the tone of the film, I'm not quite sure. But this is, seems to be innate in the Hitchcock work. Just seems he, he knows it dead on, and it's almost, that's what I mean by the pre-planning. Yes. Um, but, yeah. you know, to work with act actors like that who could deliver that sort of thing was amazing. It was great with actors. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and he obviously loved them, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and much more than he claimed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you gotta go to a birthday party. I guess my daughter's not gonna go. Yeah. So <laughs> you're all invited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jane, love it. Yes. <laughs> Single file out of the theater. Yeah. Well, look, it's a beautiful film. You know, Thanks, I mean, um, Thanks for coming. It's great. Um, uh, but a lot of it, you know, I mean, uh, Marty and I have been talking about Hitchcock and tons of other things for the last twenty-four years. Twenty-four years. Twenty-four years. So yeah. this is. And it's like a rediscovery every time. Yeah. 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 And say, hey, did you look at that one again? Or yeah. under Capricorn, for yeah. example, yeah. which right. uh, is quite quite interesting. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, no, there, there's uh, there's no let up. I think of the inspiration once you let yourself in for it. In a sense once you, once you go with it, you know, um, and have no preconceived ideas of it. Yeah. But thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.